Brooklyn Tweed started with the goal of supporting ranchers in the U.S. That was one of the reasons I wanted to do this whole yarn thing. And as we've worked over the last 10 years, just about now, to make connections with ranchers and wool brokers and find ways to get breed-specific wool that's grown in the U.S., we've been making yarns at a volume that doesn't really allow us to purchase wool from one specific ranch. Usually we need to combine wool from two, three, four ranches, depending on how many head of sheep those ranches are running. We've been able to do that because there are multiple ranches in the country growing a certain breed. So if we're looking for a Rambouillet or a Merino or a Targi breed of sheep, we find the ranches that grow that kind of wool and combine them into a volume that makes sense for us to be able to make a repeatable yarn that is consistent. And in that work, we've met ranchers who are kind of taking their wool growing to another level. They actually are interested in taking care of the animals in such a way that fleece quality is enhanced over time. I'm Jim Forbes and we're at KC Wyoming, which is the center of Wyoming. I'm a rancher, a sheep rancher. Ranch is Forbes Ranch. So I'm 60 years old and I was born and raised here. My dad bought the place and, and moved here and my dad was raised over uh, south of here about 20 miles by the crow fly, but his dad, my granddad, came from Scotland and homesteaded, so, you know, there's quite a bit of family around here and relations. The Ramlay breed has always been good on the range. You know, they're browsers like all sheep, but the Ramblays, they're pretty hardy and survive. In the spring, I take my sheep to the mountain and around the end of June, and the lambs are younger, so you got to kind of go slower and and it's all uphill. Uh, in the fall, it's way easier because it's all downhill and everybody is legged up and muscled up and ready to go, you know. And I've been in the Ramblay business, registered Ramblay's for 40 years. So, and I mean, the Ramblay's supposed to have a good fleece. So that's what I've strived over the years to try to keep the, a good fleece, you know. And I ain't there yet, but I'm still trying. No matter what you're in, you can always do better. You know, and, and like me and the sheep, I'm always trying to improve them. And I'd like to, you know, been a sheep that didn't, didn't cost you no money to raise, you know, but I don't think we'll ever get that done. <laughs> Lamb and sheep, you're, you try to save them all. And it ain't just because you're thinking of the dollar, you're thinking of uh, life. I mean, uh, you, get, you get attached to them and and you put a lot of time in them and everything else and it, they, like all of them it's it's tough to sell them but if you get overstock and starvation or disease and stuff is, is tough you can't handle either yeah i'm an animal lover the biggest thing about this lifestyle i like to think you're your own boss my end goal would probably be to be carried on i mean to the next generation and my nephews terry take it on you know keep it going I mean, I wouldn't change at all, you know. I mean, I, I don't, first thing is, I don't know who would hire me, and another thing is, I don't think I could work for nobody. <laughs>In my experience, I think the ranchers have sort of embraced what we're doing because for a very long time, um, for many of them, the wool had very little value. The way that American ranchers traditionally sell their wool is by selling it to a buyer who's buying a very vast quantity of wool. In so doing, they have to buy wool from so many ranches that you lose the specificity of the breed and of the quality that one rancher may be devoted to producing. So farm yarns that are going back to a single source became something that we were interested in in order to find a way to support that small number of ranchers that we know of right now who 
are motivated by whatever reason, usually personal reasons, to continue making their fleece quality improve over time. Making yarn in a way that honors the, the people who grow the wool is not necessarily a new idea. It's something that we have been fortunate enough to be seeing done in our industry, um, mostly by small businesses um, who really have a connection to what that means, what it means to be growing a fine fleece. In making a yarn that is a limited edition quantity one time that allows us to work with just the wool that one ranch is able to grow in a shearing season is, I see it as a way of honoring the work that a rancher does. Our process really starts with the wool itself. We're focused on breed specific wool. And the reason we do that is because each breed has um, characteristics that um, are special and we like to enhance those things and bring them to uh, the attention of the knitting population or anybody who uses our yarn. You don't have to be a knitter. So for us, um, we know where the sheep are grown. We know where there's, the wool is scoured. We know which meal it's going to go to, where it's dyed, what kind of dyes are used. Um, and everything from the very beginning to the very end until it's at our warehouse. Having that knowledge makes people feel more engaged with, with the source. It's similar in my mind to buying fresh produce. Um, you know, while many months of the year we go to the grocery store and buy our produce, there are times here in Portland where we go to the farmer's market in the summertime and it's nice to meet the people that, that grew the carrots or the, the cucumbers. Um, and you know, it's, it's close to home and you feel like you're supporting these real people. So the same goes for our yarn. We see the faces of the folks that are taking care of the sheep and um, processing the, the fiber all through the steps. If I was talking to a, a friend or an acquaintance about Ranch 2 and I had to describe it to them, I would say it's 100% Rambouillet. It's a three-ply construction, wool and spun yarn, that's knitting you know, about in the, the heavy worsted range. Um, the color palette is limited. There's uh, nine colors and natural. Uh, which we thought was really important to show it in its its natural state. And the palette um, was uh, de developed from the, the scenery, the natural beauty around the ranch. What is most exciting to me about Rancho 2 is the color palette. Um, we saw it came in when Stephanie and Jared were developing it, and of course it was beautiful. But then once Jared's photos of Forbes Ranch came in, and you're able to see exactly where he got the inspiration for the palette. It was so cool. And now I'm working on the lookbook, which is putting the yarn photos with the landscape photos. And you get to actually, you see exactly where Curly Cup comes from. You know, this is this yellow that's actually a little flower that was on the ranch. And I think that will just be such a boon to telling the story um, and getting other people really excited about the yarn. I'm just so excited about Rancho 2 in general. Number one, I'm excited about the fiber itself because Rambouillet is like the squishiest, springiest yarn. I got a sweater quantity of yarn already. And as soon as that bag came in, it was just bouncy. It's buoyant. It's gonna be a little crop sweater that I'm gonna make. And that thing is just gonna be light to wear, but it's gonna have this vitality to the fiber too. And I really love that. And I think that's intrinsic in the breed. I see a lot of yarn <laughs> um, and it's dangerous. Sometimes it starts to look like widgets when you're running a store for as long as I've been for 13 years. And Rancho 2 is one of those yarns that as soon as the box came, like we all crowded around and opened it up and took a look and squished it. And I can imagine myself knitting a sweater, which I have not done in many years. I think the education piece of a yarn like Rancho 2 is really important. Knitting is something that started as a craft out of necessity. People were knitting clothes and especially out of wool. They were warm even when they got wet. It was really a practical skill that was necessary for everyday life. And we've gotten really far from that. Um, not that knitting itself is any less meaningful or valuable, but you know, there's a lot of acrylics and people might knit the, their entire lives without, without ever seeing a sheep. By 
working closely with these ranchers, we're supporting them, not just in being able to share their story and get people really excited and inspired to work with their product, but also we're able to pay them a premium for the work that they're doing because they deserve it. And at the end of the day, they need to pay their bills. And what better way than to be able to create a beautiful hand knitting yarn that can end up in someone's knitting basket. And in turn, they're supporting not just the rancher, but the local economy of the rancher. They're supporting us and us continuing to work with other supply chain partners. The other really neat thing about the Ranch Project is it's a chance for us as knitters outside of Brooklyn Tweed and as a team at Brooklyn Tweed to really highlight the beautiful fiber that's produced. There is something really special about wool with provenance, a wool with an origin that you can point exactly on the map and say, hey, this is from this place. There's people out there doing amazing work and taking wonderful, wonderful care of their animals and producing beautiful fiber. And to be able to preserve that, the uniqueness of that, that fiber and share it with knitters is, it's super ins inspiring and exciting. And it's just wonderful yarns that we're making. I feel really lucky that, that we get to do that and that we can pass that along to other people so that they can share in that. It's really cool. I have gotten a chance to uh, work with Rancho too. It just feels so plump on the needles and working through my fingers. I worked up one of the new hats patterns that's coming out with the Rancho 2 um, collection. So we have two new patterns coming out for Rancho 2. We have a hat um, and then we have a sweater. There is a lot of pride and a lot of personal satisfaction on the rancher's side when they know that the wool that's been shorn off of their sheep, you know, ends in a, in a product that stays in people's hands for hundreds of hours and, and it's enjoyed and appreciated. It's, it's really an exciting endeavor um, all around and one that we hope to continue, and if not just to continue, to strengthen over time because it's a, it's a beautiful program and it puts us in touch with incredibly inspiring people out there. The best part about this project is the more ranch-specific yarns that we're creating, the more awareness um, that we're generating about being a company that is looking for ranch-specific connections, for looking for ranches who are paying attention and paying attention to fleece quality. Um, so our hope is that in doing this, we are able to connect with even more ranchers that we, we don't even know about yet or we haven't made a connection with um, and be able to work with them and tell their story and support the work that they do as well. Thank you.